In this video, let's go ahead and apply our understanding of solving linear systems of equations by trying some of these coin combination problems. For question one, throughout the year, Jack has collected 600 quarters and dimes, which totals $123.75. The question is, is how many quarters does Jack have? For starters, let's go ahead and define our variables. So I'm gonna go and let Q represent the number of quarters, and I'm gonna go ahead and let D represent the number of dimes. So we have these two different variables and let's go ahead and set up two linear equations. So we know that if we have the number of quarters plus the number of dimes, that is gonna be a total of 600 coins. So we can just go ahead and add those up because we know there's 600 coins in total. And then we also know the total amount that they are worth, right? So quarters are going to be worth 25 cents each. So how do we figure out how much that's worth? Well, it's 25 cents per quarter. So if we multiply 25 cents or 0.25 times Q, that's gonna be how much all the quarters are worth plus dimes are worth 10 cents, so that's 0 0.1, so it's 10 cents per dime, so 0 0.1 times D. And so if we add up the value of all the quarters plus all the value of the dimes, that's gonna be the total value, which is $123.75. This will be the linear system that we can solve to find the number of quarters that Jack has. Now you can solve the system a few different ways. Uh, some people might like using substitution. I'm gonna go ahead and try using elimination here. Uh, in particular, I'm gonna take this second equation and just multiply uh, the entire equation by 100 just to clear the decimals, right? So I don't wanna deal with those. So, so if we multiply that entire bottom equation by 100, we're gonna end up with 25Q uh, plus 10D. And that's going to be equal to one, two, three, seven, five. So notice how we don't have any decimals here anymore. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use elimination to solve this system. So I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate the D uh, as a variable here because we're solving for Q, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this entire top equation by 10. If we go ahead and do that, we're gonna get 10Q and then we're gonna go ahead and add another 10D here. And then 600 times 10, that's going to be 6,000. So by doing that, we just got these coefficients to match here. So we can go ahead and eliminate the D variable by subtracting these two equations. Now 10Q minus this 25Q, that's gonna be a negative 15Q. Then we have that 10D minus 10D, which eliminates and cancels out. And on the right side, we have 6,000 minus the 12,375, and that's gonna be negative 6,375. And it's good that this is negative because in a moment we're trying to get a positive value for the number of quarters, right? So let's go ahead and now just divide both sides by negative 15 here, just so we can solve for Q. Dividing both sides by negative 15, we should find out the number of quarters or Q is gonna be 425. So out of all those 600 coins that Jack has, 425 of them are quarters. Here's another example. In number two, Martin emptied his coin jar and found that it contained six times as many quarters as dimes. If the total amount of money is $28.80, how many quarters and dimes are in the jar? All right, so just like in the last example, we should go ahead and define some variables here. So we have quarters and dimes. So let's go ahead and define Q as the number of quarters and D as the number of dimes. Now we're told that the jar has six times as many quarters as dimes. So for our first equation we can set up here, we can say the number of quarters is going to be six times the amount of dimes that we have, right? So Q equals this six D. So you can also just plug it in and say, if D was equal to like two here, then Q would equal 12, which is six times more than two. Or we said D was equal to like five, then five times six would be 30, so if there were five of these dimes, then there would be 30 quarters, which is six times more. So that's what we can write from that first bit of information. And then for the second bit, we know the total amount of money is $28.80. So what are the quarters worth? The quarters are worth 25 cents each per quarter. So that's the total value of those quarters, plus the dimes are going to be 10 cents per dime. That's the value of all the dimes. And if you add up the value of the quarters and the dimes, we're getting $28.80. This will be our system of equations that we can use, and we can use this to solve for the number of quarters and dimes. Just like in the last example, let's go ahead and clear out the decimals here in the second equation so we don't have to deal with decimals. Looks like we have hundredths as our greatest uh, decimal place value here. So if we multiply everything by 100, then we're gonna end up with 25Q, and that's gonna be plus 10D, and that equals uh, this 2,880, and now we don't have any decimals. For the top equation, I'm actually just gonna leave it alone, and we're gonna go ahead and use substitution for this one, I think, just because uh, we already have Q alone here, so substitution makes a lot of sense. 
So again, we know this Q from this first equation is the same thing as 6D. So we can go ahead and swap this Q out for that 6D. So we have an equation with just one variable. So instead of Q in the second equation, let's go ahead and write 6D. So it's gonna be 25 multiplied by that 6D. Let's just make that substitution here. And then plus 10D, that's gonna equal this 2,880. Now multiplying this 25 times 6D, that's gonna be 150D. So we'll have 150D plus this 10D, and that's gonna be equal to this 2,880. Now combining like terms on the left side, 150D plus 10D is gonna be 160D. That's equal to 2,880. And then we can go ahead and just divide both sides by 160 to solve for D. So if we do that, we find out that D is gonna be equal to 18. So we know they're gonna be 18 dimes here. We can go ahead and substitute that back into this top equation. And if we do that, we can solve for the number of quarters. So if we go ahead and say that uh, we have six times 18, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw like an arrow over here and say that Q is gonna be equal to six times whatever uh, D is, which we found is 18. So it's six times 18. So we can say that Q is gonna be equal to 108. All right, so from that, we know that Martin has 18 dimes and 108 quarters. Let's try another one. In number three, Shaylee found 14 coins in the couch that have a total of $2.30 of value. The coins are nickels and quarters. How many of each coin does she have? Let's go ahead and start by defining our variables. In this case, we have nickels and we also have quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and use N and Q for those variables. N will represent the number of nickels and Q will represent the number of quarters. All right, so setting up some equations, we know she has 14 total coins. So the number of nickels plus the number of quarters should equal 14 in total. And we also know the total value of all this is going to be $2.30. So nickels are worth five cents each. So 0 0.05 per nickel or 0 0.05 N plus quarters are worth 25 cents each. So 0.25 Q, and if we add those two values up, it should equal $2.30 or just 2.3. So this will be our system. Just like in the last few examples, I'm going to go ahead and clear the decimal so we don't have to worry about those. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this bottom equation by 100 just so uh, we have just whole numbers here. So if we do that, the whole second equation is going to be 5n plus 25q, and that's going to be equal to 230 on the right side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use elimination for this uh, particular problem. I think I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate the ends here. I think that's gonna be a little easier just cause the coefficient is smaller. So let's go ahead and multiply this top equation uh, on both sides by five here. So we get matching coefficients. If we do that, we're gonna get five N and then we're gonna get five Q and then 14 times five is gonna be 70 on the right side. All right, so notice how these coefficients match here of five and five. How do we eliminate that? Well, we can do that by subtraction. So 5n minus 5n cancels out to get zero n. 5q minus 25q is gonna be negative 20q. And then on the right side here, 70 minus this 230, that's going to be negative 160. All right, finally, we can divide both sides by negative 20. If we go ahead and do that, we find out that q is going to be equal to eight. That's the number of quarters. Now, if we know the number of quarters is eight, we can go ahead and plug that in into this top equation. So we know that this value of Q is eight. So what does that have to mean? So it's gonna say here that N plus this eight, we just found out for Q is equal to 14. So we know that N must equal six. So using our systems of linear equations, we found that Shaley has six nickels and eight quarters. All right, here's one more example. In this problem, Nyan has 12 more pennies than he has nickels. Altogether, he has $2.94. How many of each coin does he have? So let's start by defining our variables. In this case, we have pennies and nickels. So let's use the variable P for the number of pennies, and then let's go ahead and use N for the number of nickels. All right, so we know what variables we're going to be using here. It looks like Nyan has 12 more pennies than he has nickels. So whatever number of nickels he has, we should say if we add 12, that's gonna be the number of pennies. So I think for this first equation, we say the number of pennies is going to be the number of nickels plus 12, right? That hopefully makes sense. You can try some uh, random numbers for N and see if the P value does make sense here uh, for the numbers of each of those coins. And then we also know the total value of everything. So what are pennies worth? Pennies are worth one cent each or 0 0.01. So the value of all the pennies is just 0 0.01 times how many pennies there are 
plus the nickels are going to be 5 cents each, so 0 0.05 multiplied by n, and then the total value of all these is going to be $2.94. Alright, so this right here will be our system. Um, to go ahead and solve this, just like the last few, let's go ahead and clear the decimal so we can just deal with whole numbers, multiplying the whole bottom equation by 100. What are we going to get? Well, I think we're just going to get P uh, plus uh, 5N. So you could write the 1P or just write P plus 5N. And that's going to be equal to 294. Alrighty. Um, I think what we can do is just keep the top equation the same. I don't think we need to do too much here. I think we can just use maybe substitution. All right. So uh, what I mean by that is if we look at the top equation, we can see that P is equal to N plus 12, right? So what we can do is go to the bottom equation here. And since they're in the same system, we can replace this P with that N plus 12. So we can go and say that N plus 12, which again is the same value as P plus the five N is equal to 294. All right, we can go ahead and combine some like terms as 1n and 5n are gonna make 6n. So we're gonna get 6n plus 12 is equal to 294. Then we can go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides here. And if we go ahead and do that, we're gonna see that we have 6n is equal to 282. And then finally, if we go ahead and divide both sides by six, we should find here that n is gonna be equal to 47. All right, so this is the number of nickels, but if we go ahead and substitute that in to one of our original equations here and say n is 47, we can go ahead and solve for p, right? The number of pennies. So we can go ahead and say, okay, p is gonna be equal to uh, the number of nickels, which is 47, and there's 12 more, so we're gonna add 12. If we go ahead and do that, the number of pennies here is going to be 59. So in summary, Nyan has 59 pennies and 47 nickels. All right, so there you have a few different practice problems on applying our understanding of systems of linear equations to solve some of these coin problems. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep with the great work that you're already doing.